And we'll now go to Mr. Chong for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the second highest v v merchandise valued export to the People's Republic of China in 2023 was bituminous, uh, bituminous coal. Um, and, you know, when we look at the record of China on climate change and coal, uh, it, their words and Western government's approaches to uh, this issue are completely contradictory. Ten years ago, I think it was reasonable for Western governments to propose cooperation with China on climate change and GHG emissions. Many people, uh, including uh, Western governments, thought coal demand would peak in 2013, um, including the IEA, I might add, and decline from there. Uh, they thought uh, the PRC would work in good faith with uh, the world community on reducing emissions. But a report came out uh, last year from a Finnish-based non-governmental organization and uh, called the Centre on Research on Energy and Clean Air and Global Energy Monitor, which is a, a second not-for-profit that monitors fossil fuel infrastructure. In 2022, China approved the largest expansion of coal-fired power plants since 2015. Uh, and in the rush to build these new coal-fired plants, uh, they granted permits for 106 gigawatts of capacity in 82 new locations across China, the highest number since 2015, and four times higher than in 2021. As a result, China is now burning more coal than the rest of the world combined, and the world this year is burning more coal than it ever has, a record number. Last year, it burned a record amount of coal the world did, and so it did in the previous year. And so this is all because of China's absolute commitment to massively expanding the burning of coal, which happens to be one of our largest exports to the People's Republic of China. And so my question is, in November of 2021, Canada announced its intention to ban thermal coal exports mm -hmm. in six short years to the People's Republic of China. Um, are these goals compatible? Are these two things compatible? That's my question. So I'm not familiar with the figures you presented. Um, I do handle the trade side. Fortunately, we have a natural resource center that focuses on energy, the environment, and the transition, the climate, uh, the energy transition. But I'd be curious to see the numbers for India, too. Um, I imagine that their numbers are going up. I know exports from Australia certainly have uh, with their agreement. Um, so I would say China is, you could say, one step forward, two steps back. Someone from the other side who's on the clean energy side, the solar side, could say two steps forward, one step back. So there are many factors at play with China. I'm not trying to equivocate here. It's just a very complex, multifaceted um, engagement with them on energy and the transition. So there are things that China is doing that I think uh, countries that are concerned about climate change and reducing emissions would be very supportive of, and there are things where they would be castigated. But I think that's across the board in the developing world. Let me ask you this then. Nowhere uh, in the government of Canada is there a definition of clean energy? Yeah, I Nowhere. know. You've, you've... And uh, we pointed that out in committee a yes. number of meetings ago. <laughs> large part of the Indo-Pacific document is based on the export of clean energy, but nobody can define what that is. Would you classify LNG as clean energy exports? Let me just say, I did enjoy that particular session of, of that meeting. Yes, I would. Absolutely. These are critical. And I think the government recognizes this as well, um, that LNG is necessary. I keep getting mixed signals. We talk about the Japanese ambassador's <clears throat> comments. Um, Japan is looking to transition. Um, so I think if you're talking about engaging Japan on LNG, you have to recognize that it's a, a, a part of the transition. So I, I think there's some confusion perhaps on the government about this, but I do see a definition from them that includes LNG from time to time. Do, do you think it's a reasonable foreign policy goal for the government of Canada to say that in order to contribute to the fight, global fight against climate change, that we should make the export of LNG a priority in order to displace coal-fired electricity generation plants, seeing that they have double the greenhouse gas emissions per kilowatt hour of an LNG of natural gas plants? I think that um, 
in the limited contributions of significance that Canada can make, the move to LNG would be probably the second most significant contribution. The first being the largest producer of greenhouse gas emissions from Canada is the government of Canada, followed by the provincial governments. You look at the release of GHGs from forest fires. You own the land, you own the emissions. So forestry policy would be one area that I haven't heard the government speak about in terms of forestry management practice, uh, cutting uh, the modern forestry practices would be a huge contribution. LNG exports would be second. Our LNG is going to, going to Asia, but it's going to Mexico. So how about having us sell it, having us reap the rewards, having us sell lower uh, impact LNG? It, it just seems to make sense. It's, it's a policy in search of a problem is, is what I think of it. Thank you, Mr. Thank